Okay, we're going to continue with command number three. And um, your little leaflet in the bulletin, you'll see I had to scribble out number two and put number three. I don't know why it didn't go forward. Got it in my notes here, but um, uh, it's command number three. And I want to read a, um, a quote from C.S. Lewis. It simply says this, God doesn't want something from us. He simply wants us. I want to say that one more time. God doesn't want something from us. He simply wants us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for what you've done in this service so far. God, I just ask, Lord, um, that you just come, Lord, in only a way that you can. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your sovereign hand in our lives. And God, I just ask that you just cause us, Lord, to continue, Lord, to, to look towards you. Lord, we want to be faithful, Lord, to what you've called us to. And God, I think about this command to come. It's, it's not only a command, but it's also an invitation. And God, we thank you for your sweet invitations to us. God, I just pray, Lord, have your way in us today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When you hear the word command, sometimes our flesh reacts. Sometimes we think of it as being harsh, maybe severe, maybe something that's strict, or maybe even abrasive. But if Jesus is our everything, and I want to say that one more time, if Jesus is our everything, we will see his commands as something that is sweet. We will see them as life-giving. We will see them that it's, it, it's for our best. And again, I, th I think about God. How many of you know that this morning, and I want you to truly grasp this, that God is for you? How many of you know that? Raise your hand. I want to I see a response today. God is for you. He is for you. And again, He only has the best for you. But how many of you know that we live life, and sometimes things are hard. Sometimes things come against us. But again, I want to encourage you this morning. Usually when I counsel one-on-one, -on -one, when people are facing something, when they say to me, we're facing this and we don't know if God is in it, I'll often say to them, do you love Jesus? Are you loving Jesus? Are you loving him? Because the word of God tells me in Romans 8, in Romans 8 that all things work together for good for those that love Christ. Even as Missy prayed, Sometimes it's tough stuff, but even the worst, even the tough things, if we're loving Jesus, will work together for our good. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 11 this morning. Matthew chapter 11. This idea of this command or this invitation to come to Jesus. We're going to look at Matthew 11, starting in verse 28. It says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I don't know about you, but I love that scripture. And again, in context, I want you to, to realize what Jesus is saying here. He's talking to the people, the Israelites that have been under, the Jewish people who have been under a heavy weight of religion in context. But this applies to us today. I don't know about you, but aren't you glad that when you labor? Aren't you glad when it seems like there's a heaviness, a burden on you? Aren't you glad that Jesus says, come to me and I'll give you rest? I've experienced it for myself. It says in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we see this first scripture here where Jesus is saying, Come to me. Come to me, this invitation that is so sweet. I'll give you rest. Come to me, those that have heavy burdens. Come to me, take my yoke upon you. Upon you. He makes it clear that he's gentle. He makes it clear that we'll find rest for our souls. Make no mistakes this morning. There is a yoke and a burden when you come to Jesus. There is. I don't want you to be mistaken by that. Uh, in our world, we've been sold a lot of lies that if you serve Jesus, that everything's going to be okay. And I always go back to the disciples of Jesus Christ. 
They were obedient. They were faithful to the call that God had put upon them, and all of them died badly. They all died badly. But I can promise you this, that Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And I also want you to understand this morning, we have to understand this, that Jesus is not the burden. Jesus is not the burden. He's the burden lifter. He's the life giver. Jesus satisfies our thirst, our hunger. We're going to look at two verses right now that makes it very clear. I want you to turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 35. John chapter 6, verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. Here we see this command again to come to Jesus. And with a great promise again that whoever comes to him shall never hunger. Whoever comes to him shall never thirst. And then in John chapter 7, John chapter 7, 37 through 38. And as you're turning there, I'm thinking about the implication to the Jewish people that day. Again, not often do we think about where bread comes from or where our next drink of water comes from. But in this day, this was a promise that they should have grasped. And again, Jesus was talking to them in a spiritual way, in a spiritual manner. And today, maybe today some of you are hungry. Maybe some of you are thirsty. Maybe it seems like your relationship with him, maybe you feel like you're going through a desert. Let me encourage you, come to Jesus. Take that invitation. And in John 7, verses 37 through 38, it reads this. And on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So again, Jesus, don't, he doesn't only encourage us to come and drink from him again, but he says this, if we drink from him, if we come to him, Rivers of living water will flow out of us for others, for others. The demand to come to Jesus is a demand to come and be satisfied, to be satisfied. How many of you find yourself unsatisfied this morning? It's only a question you can answer for yourself. How many of you find yourself hungry? Again, this command is this idea of that Jesus wants to satisfy you. He wants to make sure that you never thirst again. This demand uh, promise here of bread, it makes it clear that this is a, a bread that will never go stale. A bread that will never go bad. A bread that always sustains us. This command is a command from a good father. From a good God. It's, it's like a father to a child in a burning house saying this, come to me, jump in my arms. There'll be safety. I'm thinking about, it, it, it's like a rescue team that goes to find somebody that's lost in the desert, who's in desperate need, who's all ready to be perished, who's ready to give up. Last year we went on vacation and and where did we go, hon, to the big sand dunes? you got to remind me. Sleeping Bear Dunes. And there's a, a, an area there that you can hike in. And again, we went with Pastor Paul and Aaron Rowling. And I remember I, I was already wore out from something we had done that day. And, and it was a hot day. The sun was beating down. And I remember I walked up the first two big dunes, and there was people that decided to go further. And I realized at that point that I was done. I'd taken a half bottle of water, and I'd already went through it. But Pastor Paul and some of his family decided to go further. And what happened was they only had a half a bottle of water. And we waited and waited. I remember laying down in the shade, waiting for them to return. To the point that finally we went to go send a rescue team to find them in the form of my daughter, Lizzie. And the thing was, was this, as she started up the hill, they started down the hill. And Pastor Paul actually said this, I thought I was going to die. 
I was thinking about wringing out my shirt and drinking my own sweat. He was desperate. He knew what it was like to have a dry mouth. He knew what it was like to have a need for water. And again, that's our physical. But how many of us, we go places. We think that we're going to do things the way that we want to do them. And we just leave and we do what we want to do without Jesus. Listen, maybe some of you are in that place today. Maybe you've been finding yourself going on your own strength, your own power. Jesus invites you today to come to him, to receive rest, to have that thirst quenched. Another verse I want you to turn to is John chapter 6, verse 37. John 6, verse 37. I love this verse here because how many of you know that through this demand, through this command, we also have a God that promises us that if we come to him, that he'll never leave us or forsake us. That brings me so much comfort. He promises us everlasting life. And in John 6, 37, it says this, it reads this way, all that the Father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. I don't know about you, but that gives me comfort. And most of you here, I realize that you have come to Jesus. And listen, take comfort in knowing that you'll never be cast out, that he'll never leave you or forsake you. Take comfort in that today. No matter what you're facing in your life today, no matter how desperate you think it is, take comfort in knowing that God will always be there for you. Another place in Scripture we see this command is in Revelations 22. Revelations 22, 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who desires to take water of life without price. So again, we see this sweet invitation again to us to the unbeliever, to the world. Jesus is saying, come. And this right here in this portion of Scripture, I love this because this command, this invitation is given and extended to everyone. Jesus is saying this, come to me. But the bad news this morning is this, that there's some people that will never come to God because they're enslaved in their sin. In John chapter 8, verse 34, it says this. John 8, 34. Jesus answered them, truly, truly, again, you hear that, truly, truly, listen to me. I say to you, everyone who is, practices sin is a slave to sin. They're slave to sin. And many will choose darkness over life. Over light. They will embrace their burdens instead of giving them to Jesus. They'll embrace their sin. They'll run after things that will never, never, ever satisfy. Never satisfy. In John chapter 5, 37 through 40. John chapter 5, 37 through 40. Jesus says this in verse 37. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you've never heard, his form you've never seen, and you do not have his words abiding in you. For you do not believe that the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you'll have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. And again, Jesus is talking to the religious people the day here. And I've been saying this over and over. How many realize that anything plus Jesus is religion? That's why I said this morning, the reason why we come here, it's because of Jesus. That's the reason why we come here. We come here because of Jesus and to be equipped to go do his good works in the world that God has placed you in. That's why we're here. Listen, I will say this again because I believe it has to make an impact. If you come to church 
Listen, that is not salvation. If you come to church, again, that is, and thinking that that is somehow gaining you points with God, I hate to tell you that you're wrong. Oh, it will equip you. God wants you to attend church. I think often as a pastor, sometimes maybe people get that out of whack. (laughs) Can I just say this? I'm going to just be straight honest today. When the doors are open here, you should be here. I'm just going to put it that blatant because it says this, don't forsake the assembling of the saints as time draws near. And that was written a long time ago. Time definitely has drawn near. And again, this is not to place worldly shame on anyone because that drives you away from God as we found out a couple weeks ago. But again, there should be something in you that wants to come and celebrate Jesus with your brothers and sisters in Christ. And again, I know sometimes it's a sacrifice, but how many of you know anything worth having takes sacrifice? Anything you've ever had, anything that you've ever geared for, it takes sacrifice. Some of you, you have careers and you went to school, and wasn't that a sacrifice? Not only in time, but also financially. Think about the things, and it can come to this being this easy. Sometimes it can be uh, the landscaping around your house. I don't know about you, but the Devlamics this year, because we have a graduation party, I know this, landscaping around the house is going to change. <laughs> things are going to get painted. Things, are going to, things that should have been done since last graduation party is going to happen. I'm getting geared up for it mentally. I'm saying you're going to have to be working a lot, Dave, here pretty soon. But you know what? When I do the landscaping around the house, there's going to be time invested, money invested. But you know, after I'm done, it's going to be nice. It's going to be fresh. I'm going to be able to sit back and enjoy it. And thank the Lord, unless he causes us to adopt, all our kids will be through graduation. <laughs> but we see here again this this, this, this idea it says in verse 39, if you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. Listen, only through Jesus do you have eternal life. And if you have him today, you have a gift. that will never leave. A gift that will keep on giving. You'll have a savior that has given you eternal life. You'll never thirst and hunger again. As long as you keep your eyes on Him. I want to encourage you more than ever. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Look to Jesus. Instead of looking to other things. There's many other things we can look towards. When we feel stress. When we get in a bind. When we feel like the walls are caving in on us. Some of us it could be food. Some of us it could be drink. For some of us it could be what we view on the internet. It could be our phones. Listen, can I just tell you something? Recently, I've, I found myself being consumed with that little device. And, and again, that little device that I hold in my hand, a lot of times you can use it. I, I, I've got Strong's Concordance on there, the best Strong apps that I ever had. I've got all kinds of things on there that I can practically use. But you know what? A lot of times it just it grabs onto me. And recently, I've come home recently and just said, I'm putting this in the family room on the antique table, and I'm going to leave it there tonight. I need to get away from that. What is that thing that you run to instead of Jesus? I'm going to encourage you this weekend at the youth retreat. And I want to thank everybody that went to that breakfast. Uh, We raised $600 for that retreat brought that price down for those young people. And, and let me just be honest with you, because how busy I've been, when I went there Friday night, I, was, I told Miss, I said, you know what? I don't really even feel like going. But I knew I had to be there and support Larry and the other youth sponsors. And when I got there Friday and I seen what God did Friday night, I was so glad that I went. I was so blessed. Listen, we have a great group of teenagers in this church. And for you, I know some of you weren't able to make it because you were sick. But listen, I'm going to talk to the parents. Get your kids to youth group. God's doing something in youth group. 
we love your kids. We want to invest in your kids. And again, it's just a, a great, wonderful time. Now, getting back to this, I want you to turn to John chapter 11, verse 50 through 52. How many of you know this command, this invitation, that Jesus did come to gather his flock? How many realize here, and, and, and again, he came for the children of Israel, the chosen people. But I'm going to share with you a couple of verses that are going to make it very clear that he also came for you, that he came for your neighbor, that he came for the person that you see in the store or at work. In John chapter 11, 50 through 52, it reads this, Nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people, not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this for his own accord, but being a high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for a nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one of the children of God who are scattered abroad. And in John 10, 16, it reads this, And I have other sheep that are not of this fold that I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus came for all of us. Jesus came for all of us. There's one other place that I want to share with you in John chapter 11, verse 41, where Jesus says, come to me. And it's the story of Lazarus story of Lazarus, Jesus' friend. And I'm not going to go through the whole story, but I'm going to read here in verse 41, starting in verse 41. And so they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I knew that you always would hear me, but I said this on the account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the man who had died came out. His hands and feet were bound with linen strips, and his face was wrapped with cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. And the reason why I put this in here, because again, this is a a time where Jesus said this, come to me or come forth. And what God was putting in my heart about this portion of Scripture is this, that God's calling some of you this morning. I don't know where the situation or the situation where you're at. I don't know what's going on in your life. I do know some things, if you've shared things with me, where you're at. The hard time, the, the bad situation that you're facing right now. But let me encourage you that Jesus is saying to you, come forth. Maybe you feel like you're dead. Maybe you feel in your spiritual life, your spiritual walk, it just seems like everything is just shut down, come to a halt. Jesus is standing and saying this, come forth. Come forth, I'll give you life. Come forth. Listen, you no longer have to stay in a tomb. No longer have to stay closed off to the world. But come to me and I'll give you life. You know, I'm going to paraphrase this. And some of you can go home and you can look at this. But in Matthew 22, Jesus shares a parable. And that parable in Matthew 22 is simply a parable about this wedding feast. And in this wedding feast, because again, I believe that God has called us to be those that also call others to come to Jesus. And in this parable, what happens is this. There's this man that's having this this, this wedding ceremony. And what happens is this, is he sends his servants out and they invite certain guests. And those certain guests, they all have different reasons why they cannot attend the wedding feast. And how many of you know when Jesus told parables, it was like he threw a flashbang sometimes in a room. Y'all know what a flashbang is, right? In the the movies where the SWAT team comes in, they throw the flashbang, blinds everybody, distorts everybody. 
Jesus had a way of doing that when he taught in parables. For those that needed to hear, heard. But for those that just couldn't get it, there was that flashbang effect. And for those guys, that were the religious people that were standing around him, for him to say that these people refused the invitation to this wedding feast was just unheard of because who would refuse the king? And what happens though, they all have the reason to refuse Jesus in this wedding feast. And what happens is this, is he tells his servants to go out and find, it doesn't matter who they are. He's pretty much, I always say this, the bad, the good, and the ugly. Go get whoever you can. And these servants go out and they start bringing all these people in. And what happens is this, the servants end up being killed. But they come. And in the custom of the day, they come and when they would show up there because they were the bad, the good, and the ugly, a lot of these folks did not have wedding garments. So what would happen would be this, is the king or the person that was throwing the ceremony would make sure that they had wedding garments to wear. And in this parable, what happens is Jesus comes into the room and he sees this one man who doesn't have a wedding garment on. And there's no reason for it, because you can read that parable and you can think, man, Jesus is pretty tough here. God's pretty tough here. And what happens is this man, he's removed. And I want you to really look at that parable, 22, Matthew 22, starting in verse 1. Our job is this. We are God's servants. Again, that was talking to the children of Israel, but again, an application in our own life, we are God's servants. And we are to go and invite people to come to Jesus. We are to go. Listen, nobody's ever going to come to Jesus by coming to you and saying, hey, how did you do that awesome landscaping in your yard? Oh, Jesus, he helped me with it. Jesus, he... He was there with me. How do you mow those lines in your yard so straight or in that pattern? Oh, Jesus, help me. No, we're to go and invite them to come. And invite them to come. And listen, sometimes it's going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes in, in, in the United States, listen, very seldom does somebody end up getting killed for inviting people to come to Jesus. But it's happening overseas every day. Oh, you might face persecution. At, at the youth retreat, we talked about James chapter 1. What does James chapter 1 look like in young people's lives? And today they're looking at true religion, what it means to be undefiled in the world that they live in, what it means to truly reach out to orphans and widows, those that are in need. But I'd ask you today, for you that are dead, and you feel dead in your walk with Christ, because again, it's a personal relationship, I would encourage you today to come forth. And I mean, not, I'm not having an altar invitation tonight, this morning, but come out. Jesus is saying this, come to me. And for the rest of us, maybe our relationship is good with Jesus Christ today. Maybe we're, we, we, but, but, but again, maybe we have a hard time sharing Jesus. Listen, Jesus is saying to you, go and invite them to come to me. Go and invite them to come to me. I said this recently. I used it as an example Wednesday night in the youth room. When we get a new car, it's a good thing, isn't it? Wouldn't you agree? We got a new car that last year, God blessed us with a car. Our other car, it ran, it went down the street, a lot of miles on it, and there was starting to be some of those things that blowed up the dashboard, you know. Brakes started squeaking, other things started happening. We said, it's time to start looking for God, a car. And we, we asked God to lead us to the right car, and he did. And, you know, it was just so nice getting that new car. It was good news. I remember when we brought it home and just told the kids, it was good news. Or when you have a baby, it's the best news, right? You're willing to tell everybody about it. You'll even tell people in the store. You won't believe it, I'm going to be a dad. 
this is great news. And the greatest news you've ever had was Jesus Christ. Why are we so hesitant not to share him in the grocery store? Why are we so hesitant not to share him and tell everybody about him? Park him out front in the driveway so everybody can see him. Listen, Jesus is saying today, come to me. Some of you need that rest. Some of you need a thirst to be satisfied. And it can only be satisfied through Jesus. Some of you are hungry for purpose. Some of you are hungry for something different. And your hunger can only be fulfilled through him. Let's stand this morning. It's so easy in our world to be distracted. It is so easy. As as Jeff mentioned, it's hard to get silent. So, so tough. And this is not about repentance this morning, but this is simply putting Jesus in the place that he needs to be. It's, it's this morning saying this, God, you've given me an invitation to come to you, and you'll give me rest. Maybe right now you're facing something that just seems like the walls are caving in. I would encourage you to say, Jesus, I'm coming to you. You have given me this invitation, and I'm coming to you. Maybe it's that you've been dead in your walk with him. Let me just say this this morning. If you did not go to bed speaking to Jesus and didn't get up speaking to Jesus, and sometime during your day speak to Jesus, something is wrong with your relationship with him. I'm not saying you don't have a relationship, but there's something wrong. When I and my wife talk together, if there goes a day that we don't talk, she'll remind me. There's something wrong with our relationship. Or if I just, and you guys know how this goes, hey, honey, how was your day? Good. Did anything happen? No. Is that your relationship with Jesus Christ? Just keep it to a minimum. Just keep it to a minimum. Listen, as I pray this morning, wherever you're at, I'm going to encourage you this way. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. It's such a sweet invitation. So, Lord, we come to you today, Lord, and I just thank you for everybody that's here this morning. And, God, in a world that distracts us so much, God, I just ask, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for what the promises you've given us. I thank you that you say that if we come to you, that you'll never leave us or forsake us. God, that you'll never cast us away. Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your grace in my life because there's been times where I look at myself and I'm awful hard on myself and I said, if I was you, I would just cast me away. I'd get rid of me. But God, your love is unfailing. And God, I just pray this morning for those that maybe have been having a hard time with their relationship with you, God. I just ask, Lord, let them hear the call this morning. Come out. Come forth. Come to me. If there's those here this morning that have been thirsty, hungry, and, 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 and they're looking for other things to satisfy that, I ask right now, Lord, that they come and they say, Jesus, you're the only one that can satisfy me. You're the bread of life. You're the water that will never cause me to thirst again. So, God, I just prayed this this morning. Go with our brothers and sisters. Lord, I just ask, Lord, cause them to even open up their Bibles within the next couple days to Matthew 22. And say, God, can I see myself in this parable? God, use me to go to invite others to come to you. So, Lord Jesus, I just pray, Lord, just have your way in each one of our lives. Lord, keep us until we return. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen.